We're live streaming, buddy. All right. All right. So, hi, guys. This is Arden McLaughlin with Arden's Chats. So, glad you guys came back. This is my attorney, my friend. Um, even when I ask him ridiculous questions, Sean Wagner. And Sean is here today to tell all my secrets. He's really oh, good. No, no. How he long can you have? Because that could take a while. I, he, <laughs> no, I have like zero secrets. I'm like open book, sort of. Um, even when I ask oh, questions. Oh, boys. Now, all right. This is Orange Chats. So, guys, you know, I started this because really and truly, a lot of us need help, assistance, ideas and, to keep our business going. And especially during this like pandemic. And, but even after the pandemic, we're going to need great resources because we just do. We need great people in our corner. Our friend um, Veronica Smith always talks about the need to have a great team. So Sean is on my team as my business attorney, and he is also just really good at business in general and happens to be married to a doctor facing the front lines and has lots of insight for us. So I wanted to just bring Sean in to Arden's Chats to be a resource for you guys and to also just hear what's going on in the business side of things. Um, fun fact about Sean, he also is a OU fan and not Ohio, you Ohio people, Oklahoma. That's my brother's in-laws are all OU fans. Um, Boomer Sooner is something I actually know what it means. And I feel like that bonds us that I know what Boomer Sooner means. So Sean, tell the people who you are. Uh, well, as Arden said, my name is Sean Wagner, and I'm a business attorney here in Charlotte, uh, and I work with Arden and a lot of other entrepreneurs out there in the space, and yeah, she's right. I am worried. I am married to an awesome doctor who is on the front lines, and I guess I should take a moment to give a big shout out to all you healthcare workers out there. Um, I know you guys are out there, um, you know, on the front lines with this, and while a lot of us are sitting back in the business community wondering about the uncertainty you guys are kind of out there in the chaos so um, big thank you to everybody who's putting it on the line out there to help other people and I think you know if nothing else when this is over we're going to know for sure that the uh, people in healthcare that we rely upon have uh, I mean they they earn their salary and they have moral fortitude and I, I think I even am more appreciative of what they do after all of this yeah can we touch on that really quickly? Because I, I'm still seeing people gathering. We're still seeing a lot of these things. I have had a friend whose uncle died from this. Um, literally wife of 60 years, he said goodbye to, and then they got 10 minutes and he said goodbye over at FaceTime. Like this, this is real. And I want people to know this is real. So what is Aaron, just really quickly, whatever you can share, what is Aaron seeing that we really need to know? I think it's the reality. I mean, I think we have a lot of friends out there who are, who are feel inconvenienced by having to stay home and mm -hmm. not being able to do business as usual. And I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact that there are people literally dying from this disease, literally dying from this virus. And so, you know, while I'm very sympathetic, I'm a small business owner myself, I'm sympathetic to what is happening with small businesses. I just, I, it, I think people need to understand that whatever is happening to your financial life, that's, that's significant, but there are people dying. So just keep that in mind. And, and this is not some overblown thing that, that we can just ignore and you know, kind of laugh about. Uh, this is, it's serious. I think that's what she would want me to say if she, if she were here. Yeah. And thank you, because I keep saying that too. And um, I am by myself and I've been by myself for a week now and it's not easy, it's a mental game, but there are things that we can be doing as business owners, as people who are giving, getting space to create. Um, and so once we start getting space to create, what, what are you seeing, we, we need to be in touch with you, but first, 
What is the biggest thing you're seeing with your clients that people may not realize? Well, I, I think the, the big thing that's different here is there's no real playbook for having an economy shut down this quickly and without notice. This wasn't some transition where, you know, your industry becomes less relevant or there, you know, somebody can do it better or just technology changes. This, this is unprecedented. So I think there's a lot of folks out there that don't really know what, what to do. And I think mm -hmm. in situations like this, I, I feel like my most successful clients go back to kind of just the fundamentals of, okay, what are do? kind of two big things? I need to survive, right? Just survive the downturn. And then I need to re be able to revive the business immediately afterwards. Yeah. And I, you know, you, you kind of almost have to go into survival mode. Business as usual is not going to work. And I've seen some very creative things, um, you know, over the last month or so where some of our restaurant clients are putting up signs saying, look, day whatever of the, of the pandemic, you know, support local businesses. We're still here. You know, reminding mm -hmm. folks that you're still there and that you've adapted your business to suit the current times, I think is really, really important. Um, and then I think, you know, there've been some tough decisions that have had to be made by many of our clients and it, it's heart wrenching, but people are trying to figure out, you know, how do I keep my employees on staff if I'm only, if I'm not going to be open for a month or two, mm -hmm. and I, you know, some of the things people I applaud are, are the folks that have taken kind of these collaborative approaches to it where they said, okay, employees, here's what we're going to do. We're all going to go to 60% time. So I only want you to work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then I'm going to pay you 60% until this is over as a stopgap to get us through or just creative solutions like that. Um, We've one thing, I mean, just as a small business owner, I think people think I'm disconnected from it, but you know, we, we've had the same decisions to make. We had to think about what do we need to do with our, our greatest asset, which are our employees. How do we make sure that on the other side of this, we still have this great team in place. And so we've made adjustments and been very flexible with employees, letting them work from home. And I think, you know, we're, we've already seen a lot of appreciation from our employees on that and, not that they needed to be, but you know, certainly I think it's built that relationship up a little bit to where we're going to be able to weather a lot of storms down the road. I like that. That's cool. That it is one thing everyone, like a resonating theme throughout these Arden Chat series are those that you're building partnership with now that you're leaning into and being graceful with them that's really who's gonna stand by you when we're out of this. Because Econ 101 is what goes down is going to come up and what goes up must come down, but whoever you can weather these storms with, I truly believe is going to be the people that are your, your people forever because this is just tough and it's hard for us in all sorts of different ways. So what is, okay, so once I come out of this with my great idea, which I have great ideas and they're not going to be shown on here, but Sean's going to be a part of them. Um, what, how do we, what can we be doing now to protect our ideas? And then when we come out of this to get in touch with you, like, I want to warn people, let me just back up. Probably going to legal zoom right now is not your best idea, right? Like, you want to be protected. You don't, you want to save your idea. You want to come to you. We talk about um, intellectual property and these sorts of things. Um, we want to be able to come to you. So what should I be doing to protect my idea? So when it is good, I can come to you and you can work with it on me, work with me on it. I mean, I think the main thing is to just take this time to really bake out exactly what you want to do and put together a vision for what things look like on the other side of it. And we talked earlier about uncertainty. I think that one certainty that we have here is that this is going to be over. And when it's over, it, you know, business goes on, right? And the really, the folks who are going to do the best in the post-pandemic world, if you will, are going to be those who have taken the time to really think through the strategy um, going forward. So if it's a new idea, then I would encourage people to start really writing down what this looks like, who your target is going to be. Um, how you're going to get things to market, what your value proposition is. They probably should talk to someone like you, Arden, about what your message is going to be and really come up with a coherent, coherent message and, um, you know, mission statement, if you will. You should, yeah. And then when you come, to, when you get to, you know, by the time you're ready to come to us, um, it, you know, there's no magic to what you need to show up with. 
Like we take clients as they are. We take entrepreneurs as they are. As you know, entrepreneurs are kind of the collective, collective bunch, right? So, <laughs> you know, some people show up with like a notebook that's all tattered and they've been, you know, up at 3 a.m. writing this thing, I do it down. They were in the shower and had an idea, they ran out. And so, you know, the book's just hold all- on, more- Hold on, hold on. So I was definitely in the shower and I figured out what I'm gonna be doing and that's what it is. Oh my God, there it is, there it is. <laughs> See, there you See? go. All, all of these brilliant minds, like when you're not working, your mind is still working. So I think the big thing is to just really take the time to, to bake out what you wanna do and be ready to go. And I, you know, if you're already in business, I, I think, taking the time to reconnect with your clients. I mean, this is a great time. Most of your clients are sitting at home. Um, good time to reach out and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. How are things going? Is there anything I can do to help? And not in a like biz, business generation way, but just kind of like, you know what, look, we're in this together. And yeah. I want to make sure that our clients know we're in it together. Yeah, I've been doing that. Just checking in on my people. Like, hey, how you doing? And what it, is there anything we can do? Is there anything that you need my help with? Or just the mental, like, I check in with two or three people every day. Like, hey, how you doing? What's and going by on? the way, next time you want to check in on me, no need to go on, do a live chat. You can just call me on the phone. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, what? You don't want to talk to me for all the people to see? I'm really confused. I thought I wanted to I get famous. I know. Well, you know, I, I'll be honest. I was pretty surprised when you called me. I look at the roster of alumni from the Arden's chat, and there's one thing that's not like the other here. You've got uh, politicians, CNN commentators, uh, you've got these wildly successful entrepreneurs, and then there's me. Uh, so <laughs> I, I really appreciate it, but. Sean saved my life in the middle of a very terrible situation, and then he gives me great ideas. So don't let him fool you. He's really good at what he does. So what the hell do you do? We probably should clear that up. Oh gosh, well, so I, I'm a business attorney. And so at a law firm, we have, uh, you know, kind of a full service business law firm. We deal with uh, issues of um, intellectual property and trademarks, uh, disputes, contract negotiations, purchase and sale of businesses and kind of everything in between. Um, you know, if, if you have a personal matter or, you know, something that's non-business related, I'll certainly direct you to someone else, but that's not something that we get involved with. Um, and, you know, it adds five years to the end of my life knowing that I don't have to deal with divorce cases and the like, so. <laughs> yes, very, very true. Um, okay, so here is my next question for you, Sean. One of the things we talked about immediately and one of the programs we're really working on is crisis. So we've kind of gotten over that like hump of oh my gosh we're in this but I wish people would understand that we're still in a bit of a crisis and when we come out of this like everyone's applying for PPP now and everyone's applying to get this money and all these sorts of things but there's still this element of our we're still in crisis and there's still every day like things going on and what is, what should folks be doing to really be protecting their assets now while also thinking about crisis communication strategies or legal strategies and that kind of thing as we progress? Because I, yes, we're gonna come out of this, but there's things that I just kind of want people to not to be paying attention to as well. So what's your, from a legal perspective, thinking about the crisis that we're in and going in or whatever? Well, I mean, I think, I, I like to tell people that you should be prepared for a crisis on the front end, right? And all, because while this is an unprecedented, uh, something that we may never experience in our life again, there are going to be other crises that are, um, you know, specific to your business or your mm -hmm. industry. Um, you know, you may, and, and they may not be things that are publicly known, right? I mean, sometimes people have key employees that, um, you know, something tragic happens to them or something like that. And so I think having a good continuity of business plan now, in place, like what are we going to do if X, Y, and Z happens, right? I think you should have a recession crisis plan in place if you're a business owner all the time. You should know like if tomorrow um, I lose 30% of my business or more, what are we going to do? Are we going to make it? What, what do we have to do right now to be prepared for that? Because it's going to happen again. If you want to be in business for 20, 30, 40 years, you are going to weather a lot of storms. So I think it's very important for folks to think about just nuts and bolts, what would I do 
if this, you know, and go through the most likely things. I think a recession is something everyone should think about if you're in business. I think loss of, um, you know, a key supplier or a key client or employee um, is something that you should definitely think about and just really map out what, what you want to do there. I think it's important for you to have, um, for example, if, if one of uh, your strategies for dealing with a crisis, which, which is very common, is to maybe scale up or scale down employees, they need to make sure that your employment contracts and, and the employee handbook and everything is all up to date so that when you get ready to do that, um, you know, from a legal perspective, you're ready to go. Um, I see people signing, you know, we, we helped a, a client recently buy a business and they signed a five year um, contract with the former CEO. And I'm thinking to myself, gosh, that's a, that's going to be a really tough contract to honor as you know, the business gets harmed through the storm. So I think as you, I guess, you know, they bought the business in really good times. But you need to, when you buy things in good times, you need to think about, you know, what am I going to do if things don't go the way I expect them to go? And I think there's all great business leaders out there are learning from this experience. Mm -hmm. They are building in mechanisms to deal with the next crisis that looks something like this. And yeah. so I think all business leaders and business owners out there should be doing that, small or large. Yeah. And when we talk about crisis, I'm going to interject just from the PR perspective that what people don't realize, and I've talked to some of our, we, Sean and I do a program together for IV hydration, teaching IV hydration and adding that to business for med spas and that kind of thing is what people don't realize is an attack on your personal character, an attack on um, a program you've put together, an attack on, it, you know, your YouTube channel, all these sorts of things, those are considered crisis. And those are things, it's not just employees and that kind of thing. If your personal character is being attacked, if your personal business, that's as much of a crisis and you need to be able to have a strategy for it and you need to have a legal perspective for it. So that's one thing when I talk about crisis and I talk about the communication strategy, having a legal team is just as important. And that's why having legal care before you go into business it's so key in having the right contact because you don't know what's going to come at you. We live in a world, guys, where people just feel like I know someone, I've had to block four different Instagram accounts for someone attacking someone that I am friends with on Instagram. And I think they were trying to hack my account because I kept getting all this like, your account's trying to be reset. Your account's trying to be reset. That is as much crisis as for a personal brand like me as losing employees or an employee coming after you. So having strategies in place all along the way are really, really important. So I can go to Sean and I can say, oh my gosh, I just got this letter or, oh my gosh, this person will not leave my Instagram page alone or whatever it is. And Sean can help you navigate through what that looks like and shut it down because there's nothing better than the peace of mind of just shutting things down that are getting in your headspace. Well, that, that reminds me of you, you mentioned, I think in situations like that, right, time is of the essence. And so yeah. you don't have time to go comparing different folks out there. So for example, if you need, it's not a good time in the middle of a crisis to, you know, interview or talk to three or four lawyers, right? You need yeah. someone right then. And, you know, honestly, even if you had someone in mind, sometimes it's not, you know, if you're not an existing client, um, it can be difficult to get on a lawyer's schedule on no notice, right? I mean, yeah. we really protect our time and, and reserve it for client matters. And so you want to have that in place. Same thing with Arden. Like, you want to have Arden, you know, retained in advance because you want to be able to call her and get something done within, you know, 30 minutes, not two days. Right, right. And that's what, like, I have to do that. Like, I, like I said, I work for politicians and these kind of people, and sometimes it is just, I need this right now. And so if I'm on retainer, if Sean's on retainer, I need this right now gets answered because crisis happens at all sorts of different hours. So does anybody have, um, I'm going to let you go, Sean. I don't have any questions coming to me, but I'm going to leave this up guys. And I want y'all to ask questions. You're going to watch it later. I know I get lots of views later. Um, I'm going to put Sean's information. Are you okay with me putting your website up so they can get in touch with you? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so y'all can get in touch with Sean because I do think 
there's some really cool things that are going to come out of this. All of you watching are going to have some really cool ideas and I want you to get in touch with him. Like he really has the integrity you're looking for. He has the smarts that you're looking for, all the things. And that's what you need with a business attorney. And you can practice in all the states, right? So it depends on what it is, but yeah, I, I, we help, we have clients in like 47 states on business matters. So. Okay. Yeah. We'll likely be able to help those. He everywhere, y'all. He famous. See, he's acting like he's not famous. Um, I wish his cat would come out. He has a hairless cat. And don't let Rachel Green from Friends fool you. That hairless cat might be the sweetest thing in the world. Close to Bruce. Bruce is the sweetest. But then Sherlock is close behind. He, he has his moments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, Sean, tell him where to find you. Not on Instagram because he won't answer you. <laughs> yeah, so just, uh, you know, obviously go to our website. It's uh, wagnerhicks.law, and Arden's going to put that up. Uh, we're happy to talk to you. Hope everyone stays safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.